everyone, welcome and thank you so much for coming. My name is Heidi and I'm a Customer Success Manager here at Safety IQ. My role primarily focuses around ensuring that you get the most value out of our system. This means many different things to many different clients, depending on their use case, their industry, uh, and their idea of what success looks like in implementing our system. As such, I hear a lot of different stories and I see our software being implemented across a wide variety of industries and obviously for differing reasons. One common thread I hear is that companies have a multitude of data, however, are insight poor. I'm not going to promise to fix that today. However, my goal is to be able to give you access into the data you have available through Safety IQ. I want to show you how to connect it to something tangible and be able to start gaining some insights. For today's agenda, I realise that not all of you are current Safety IQ customers, and I would like to take you through a high-level overview of our journey management module. And this will allow you to envisage the types of data that will be available and the types of data that might be valuable to you. We will discuss the power of the data within Safety IQ and the power of data within safety. I want to demonstrate this with some real-life examples from our clients and how they've used our data and our system to achieve operational efficiencies and increase compliance. And we will work through together how to get your data out of the platform and I will show you how to connect this to an external platform to allow you to be able to start delivering data uh, for yourselves and getting uh, some tangible outcomes from that data. The platform I'll be connecting to is Power BI. Uh, there are many other platforms on the market, um, but Power BI is what we'll be using today. And this will enable you to start creating your own visuals. At the end of the call today, to thank you for your attendance, I have prepared a Power BI template. This template contains some information that other clients have found useful. We'll also send through some instructions on how you can connect the data. So don't worry if you don't take notes or miss out on some of those instructions. So into our journey management overview. The journey management module within Safety IQ allows companies to have a visualisation over where their users are throughout the course of their day. It allows you to ensure that they're safe and well. And we digitise what was previously paper-based or Excel-based into a system that can provide you with insights over your workers. It also allows you as a company to be able to respond real time when something is happening uh, with one of your employees. So how does it work? A user logs in to Safety IQ and they build out their activity. So an activity can consist of multiple action types. An action type could be uh, driving a vehicle, it could be working on site, it could be loan worker. So an activity isn't just driving from point A to point B. An activity can be driving point A to point B. They might be working on site for a period of time. They then might be driving to another site, working on that site, and then driving home. Users can build out various checkpoints as they move throughout their day. Once they've built their activity out, and the activity obviously does need to sit within your own company guidelines for check-ins, rest breaks, etc. Once that's saved, users will be presented with a digital risk assessment to complete. Now, the risk assessment can be really simple as a checklist of questions, or it can move into something more complex that's customised specifically to the risks that that user is going to face for the day. Once the risk assessment has been approved, the journey will then commence. On commencement, we do send a reminder notification to users to let them know that the journey is about to start. Users are able to integrate additional devices into their journey, which bring about different benefits for various reasons. Uh, an example of these integrations is our IV is IVMS platforms, uh, as well as being able to bring in handheld GPS devices like Garmin and Spot. As the user moves throughout their journey and at the times that they've nominated in their activity builder, they'll receive a check-in message via SMS and email. To complete that check-in, they need to just respond back yes with the text message, or they can log into the web application and click the big green check-in button. 
If users have Garmin devices with them as well, they can also check in with the Garmin device. As users, if a user doesn't check in, that's when our automated escalation process will kick in. The automated escalation process is predefined as part of the onboarding plan for those particular users in the team that they're a part of. And this will send a notification to somebody in management to let them know that that user hasn't checked in. This enables you to start the recovery process for that user. With the additional integrations, including IVMS and GPS, we can also ensure that critical events throughout journeys are not missed and follow the same escalation pathway. So for example, if I have a GPS device included on my journey and I hit the SLS button on the GPS device, that is gonna allow notifications to go to my level one manager to let them know that I'm in trouble and I need assistance. Additionally, with your, the IVMS, of, IVMS devices, uh, they're also, if there's a duress button, you can hold the duress button, that's gonna send notifications out through that channel, as well as critical incidents such as a vehicle rollover or a collision. So data has an incredible impact in enhancing workplace safety. In industries where safety is cr a critical concern, such as manufacturing, construction, and healthcare, the connection and analysis of data can lead to significant improvements. Through the use of technology, we can monitor conditions in real time and identify potential hazards before they escalate into accident. By leveraging historical data, we can predict safety incidents and deploy preventative measures, proactively saving lives and reducing injury. Data also plays a pivotal role in emergency response and disaster management. When a crisis strikes, rapid and accurate data collection can mean the difference between life and death. Through the use of Safety IQ, emergency responders can pinpoint the exact location of incidents, identify at-risk staff, and allocate resources effectively. This leads to quicker, more precise responses, ultimately saving lives, lives and minimising the impact of disaster. I just want to point out as well uh, that there is uh, ethics around using data um, in any field, but particularly in safety, it's really paramount that we ensure the privacy of individuals is respected when collecting and using this data. Data security must also be a top priority to prevent against potential breaches and misuse. Data within the safety tool, data within the safety field, sorry, is a tool that empowers us to prevent accidents, respond to emergencies, and safeguard our team members' wellbeing. The fusion of data with technology has transformed safety from a reactive space to a proactive one. I'd like to discuss some client stories with you now where we have efficiently used data to reduce response times in critical events and increase compliance. So in our first use case, we have an inspiring story of how a company with over 40,000 staff utilised Safety IQ to respond efficiently in the face of a natural disaster. In the recent cyclone Isla that hit northwestern Australia, our client faced a significant challenge. They had to ensure the safety of their extensive workforce in the affected area. Before implementing our system, they relied on manual and paper-based journey plans. The challenge they faced was daunting, lives were potentially at stake, and time was of the essence. By implementing Safety IQ, they gained access to real-time data that provided them with critical insights in relation to their staff whereabouts during the cyclone. They could quickly identify who was in harm's way and needed immediate assistance. This data-driven approach allowed them to be able to respond with incredible efficiency. The benefits that they saw, the most significant benefit was life-saving, of course. Within, with the real-time data, they could pinpoint those in danger, prioritise their evacuation. The efficiency in their response improved dramatically. Response was reduced from hours to minutes and they were able to allocate their resources effectively and respond promptly. There was a time and cost saving naturally by not having to rifle through a million bits of paper and try and find out where people were, manually calling people to find out where they were and ensure that they were safe. Improved decision-making was one of the key highlights for them. The real-time data 
basically enabled that they were ensured that they were making the decisions with the right information and it was up to date. They could choose who they needed to be able to evacuate quicker and first, who was most likely to be in harm's way first, and then move throughout the remainder of their workforce. Moving on to a second story. One of our clients has a really large field base, a large base, sorry, of field staff. They face a challenging task. They're traveling vast distances daily, often exceeding 400 kilometers through remote and challenging terrain. Ensuring the safety and compliance of their team is something that was a paramount concern. The primary challenge lay in the remote and often harsh environments where their field staff operated. Ensuring they were complying, ensuring their safety, complying with duty of care regulations and maintaining effective communication were essential. The traditional approach, which was paper-based, was falling short and leaving a lot of risks unaddressed. The solution? To overcome these challenges, our client connected our data with information from their IVMS platform. This integration enabled real-time tracking and monitoring of their field staff. The data-driven approach increased compliance with journey management regulations, ensured duty of care to their employees and facilitated seamless communication. The overall benefits was in it were an improved safety culture. The data-driven solution led to enhance safety culture within the organization. Field staff felt safer, leading more valued, feeling more valued, leading to, that led to an increase in job satisfaction and morale. They had enhanced compliance by seamlessly integrating data from our system and their RVMS platform, our client was able to achieve impeccable compliance with journey man management regulations, minimizing risks and potential liabilities. The other benefit that they saw was a centralization of information. So being able to bring in multiple data sources into one platform enables them to have all relevant information at their fingertips. It also enables you to start seeing trends and patterns across areas where you may not have seen them before with the disparate technology solutions. So now onto the how-to portion of today's webinar. It's three steps really, and it's quite easy to be able to pull the data out of the system. The first thing we need to do is generate an API key from the safety IQ system. Some of you may know this system as Jesse, whilst we're going through the rebrand. To do that, you need to log into Jesse. To confirm, you will need to be a company administrator within the program and if you aren't a company administrator and you want access to it, please contact a company administrator within your company. So I go into my company tab and I go to API token. I go new API token. I want to be clicking the view all functionalities in the API token, and then I want to give it a name. Click new API token, and this generates a token for me. I need to copy that by clicking the little copy function over here. When I close out of here, that API token will never be seen in full out of the system again. So really important that you save it somewhere that is safe and not accessible by a lot of people. Uh, copy, copy that in here and then click close. That's it from getting the information out of the system. Then you need to open your Power BI desktop. We've provided a template. This is the template that we will provide you at the end of the call today. What you need to do now is basically link your data into this template. So I go transform data and I want to go into my data source settings. I can see that I already have the OData feed hooked up to come out of the system. I then need to edit the permissions to move it to being my API key. I put that API key in and I click save. There's already an API key in here. What I would do then is click refresh. And that's gonna pull all of the data out of my system. So what can we see and what data sets do we have available? What you can see over here, these are the data sets that are being pulled through from the system. 
And this enables you to start customising the information that you're presenting to meet your organisational objectives. So we have different activity statuses and different activity information. So the start time, end time, uh, team IDs, user IDs. Moving into activity notes, so you can start to get a really good picture of communication throughout your organisation. Are your risk assessments hitting the mark or have they become a tick and flick exercise? Are risk assessments being approved in time? Are they not being approved in time? What's the communication like between managers and the end staff? We have a multitude of information about checkpoints. So the long and lats of those checkpoints, the team ID, team that they're associated to, planned check-in, actual check-in, uh, and this all links back to a centralised activity ID. We then have our default team tables. So that's how our data is organised, is through our teams. We have information in relation to devices and how devices are being used in the field. We can bring in passenger information. Uh, we've also included some rolling calendars, just as a best practice from a Power BI standpoint. Uh, and there's some time zone information in there as well, along with all your generic user information. So moving over to some of our pre-built out visuals. You can obviously change these visuals. This is just something we've created as a template to assist to get you started. So you can see your team usage overall, who, who are your highest teams, who are your lowest teams. A month by month activity status, so you can see what's been happening, how often each of these teams are traveling. A transport summary, what's your most frequent travel type. We also have a map visualization, which allows us to see at a glance where people roughly have been traveling. So in this visual, we can see most of our check-ins are happening in Australia. We then have our check-in difference. So check-in difference is a metric that we've enabled uh, in here. And what this is, is it's showing you when someone has planned to check in versus when they've actually checked in. So for this account, we can see that there is, uh, people are checking in generally a thousand minutes after they've planned to check in. And we have an incident count here as well. Uh, and you can see this is all um, date filterable and filterable by team if required. We then move into our team usage information. So the team usage information, um, we can see the dates have actually changed at the top here. Uh, so there's more incidents that have happened over that period of time. We can see who our highest users are versus our lowest users. We can see our weekly activity trends as well. So in this scenario, Wednesday and Thursday are quite high for incidents, uh, as well as Thursday being our highest day for travel and activity. We move into our team usage. We also have a breakdown of the activities and incidents. So we can see here that the Jesse Sales team is one of our highest incident teams. We have information about devices uh, and the devices, how many activities they've been used on and across how many users, which is interesting. So uh, this will potentially help you pinpoint who are your more high risk users that are going into areas where there's limited communications? We have denied risk assessments and also our top 10 checkpoints. So where are we frequenting as a company? We then move on to some more individualized information. So this is gonna show you um, at an individual level who isn't checking in when they should be checking in, which could be a compliance issue, could be a training issue. There's a multitude of reasons why. And we also have a visual here that shows us our active users that have no recorded activities. It's a great idea to continue to check this. And the reason I say that is just simply because if they should be putting one in, it's non-compliant. You don't know where they are um, as a leader. And then a user breakdown uh, of the status within the system. And we then have our cancelled and escalation data. Uh, so this is showing us what activities or the weekly check-in difference trend across the week. Um, and interestingly enough, with one client, we saw the check-in difference trend actually peaked on a Friday. So Monday through to Thursday, everyone was super compliant, checked in, no dramas. Uh, and then when we got to Friday, it was like everyone got home in the afternoon and just forgot to check in. 
Uh, and then our weekly escalation trend. So what days are we escalating more than others? We have our approved and denied risk assessment. Uh, and then we move into a breakdown of some of our risk assessment trends and some of our cancelled activity trends uh, and along with our escalations. This is an awareness and learning opportunity section. And what this does is it's showing you who we've got that have a lot of missed check-ins versus and a lot of denied risk assessments. So these might be users that potentially need to have some upskilling within the system, which we're more than happy to help with. They may, might have some deny, a lot of denied risk assessments. So are they planning far enough in advance? Uh, those kinds of, uh, can enable those kinds of conversations for you. And we also have a bit more of an interactive map view and the map view can show us exactly uh, where we're checking in. Now, this can be broken down by a team, can be colour coded, uh, whatever makes sense from a visualisation from your perspective. That's it from the template side of things. Uh, I just want to check and really that, I suppose, wraps up the webinar for today. Really appreciate your time in coming in and would obviously really appreciate any feedback that you have um, in, to, in relation to the webinar content, whether you found it useful or not, but more specifically in relation to the data that we've discussed today. Thank you so much.